Good evening and welcome to the PhysEd Summit from ESPE Chat. My name is Terry Drain and I am moderator for this session. This summit is for elementary physical educators with the goal of providing them with the tools they need to provide quality physical education to every child. This summit is an offshoot of the original PhysEd Summit and we're grateful to them for their leadership and help in um, helping us to develop and put on this event. Keep in mind, we're relying tonight on technology. If there's a problem, please be patient. Uh, should it happen that we need to um, start the room over again, refer to either Tozzl or Twitter, and we'll provide you the links there. During the session, you have the opportunity to ask questions on Tozzl, and I will mo uh, monitor Tozzl and um, uh, share the questions with, the, with Jorge when there's an opportunity. So, without further ado, let me introduce this session called Augmented Reality Check. Your presenter, Jorge Rodriguez, will explore ways to use augmented reality in your class to help you maximize instructional time, engage students, differentiate learning, and create a blended lesson. Without further ado, it's my pleasure to hand over the reins to my friend, Jorge Rodriguez. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Terry. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we'll just jump right into it. Okay, let me get to the presentation here. Okay, so Augmented reality, let's start off with um, kind of talking about what augmented reality is and um, and then we'll get into how I use it in my classroom and um, hopefully we can you can find some ways that you can incorporate augmented reality into your classroom. So augmented reality is basically a technology that uh, superimposes a computer generated image um, on the viewer's screen of a real uh, of, of the view of the real world thus providing a composite view. So um, there's a lot of examples of augmented reality that are out there. There's a lot of um, programs, there's a lot of apps that uh, incorporate augmented reality. And like I said, we'll, we'll walk through some ways that um, I've successfully used it in my class and uh, you know, to help engage my students and, and things like that. So, who am I? I'm, my name is Jorge Rodriguez, as Terry said. Um, I'm a PE teacher at, in Houston, Texas. And uh, here's some of my information. My Twitter handle is PhysEdNow. Um, I'm on Voxer. Uh, my Voxer handle is JRod1371. And my email address, PhysEdNow at gmail.com. So if you have any questions after this session and you'd like to, you know, just uh, ask on Twitter or send me an email or something like that, you know, feel free to do so. Um, I'm also, I also produce a prod podcast called the VoxCast podcast. And this is where we have conversations about, um, with educators from all over the place. And um, um, a lot of times it takes like a physical education kind of angle to, to certain topics. And you can find the podcast on Twitter. I mean, I'm sorry, on iTunes, Stitcher and Podomatic. And uh, I'm also part of the Spark I team. So that's me flying around in the top right. Um, so a proud member of the Spark I team. All right, so let's jump into augmented, augmented reality. So why use augmented reality in your class? Um, so there's several reasons why to, what, how you can incorporate augmented reality. And it, it's kind of a new and emerging technology. And uh, the brain, Response to novelty. So when the, the students put their hands on this on this type of technology, they it really engages them. It really they really respond to it. Uh, so there's some th there's some big companies out there right now that are that are um, putting a lot of money into augmented reality and virtual reality. Um, some big names, uh, for instance, are like Microsoft. They're making they're making that Hololens. Uh, that will incorporate augmented reality into into all kinds of situations and real world situations. Um, Facebook bought the Oculus Rift for I don't know how many billions of dollars, and that's a virtual reality 
uh, simulator that that you know uh, they're hoping to incorporate into uh, a lot of different a lot of different venues, and education being one of them. And so there's a lot of money, like I said, being put into this type of technology. Daiquiri is another one that's invent that uh, coming out with a a uh, headset that you can you know use in everyday life. Um, another reason to use it is that it it the interaction that you get from augmented reality enhances the learning process. So before you know if you had a a poster or some sort of a worksheet that had um, for instance like in this slide the 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 skull and labeling of the skull. Well, now you can have an actual 3D model that you can that you can manipulate, that you can um, move around, that you can go in and out of, you can layer off of, and things like that. And we'll be showing you some of that stuff a little bit later on. Um, and it'll help cre create a blended classroom. So, uh, what I like to use augmented reality for uh, mostly is to kind of multiply myself. And so, I like to set up stations, and I have my my students have my students go to those stations and all they do is is use the augmented reality app to watch a video of me giving instructions or um, a lot of times I use my my kids as uh, as models for different exercises and things like that so they go and they scan the poster and um, and then they do the exercise or do that particular station and and it's all through augmented reality um, it's a great way to integrate technology into your classroom, and again, the kids absolutely love it. They they really respond to it, uh, and it's it's um, and it's it's a lot easier, in my opinion, to access some of that content. Uh, it takes it takes a step out of you know like using QR codes and things like that. It's just it's just an instant um, access to that content. So I, I think it's a uh, like I said, it it kind of just removes a step from from using QR codes and um, things like that. So what I'm going to be doing uh, in this presentation is I'm going to let me hide this real quick. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking you through the SAMR model of integrating technology, um, and I'll take oh, and I'll show you how augmented reality can fit into each one of those steps. And so if you're not familiar with the SAMR model. Which I wasn't. Um, I wasn't familiar with it until recently when uh, Justin Slider uh, did a presentation about it, and uh, that's when I learned about it. And I thought it was a really cool model, so I thought I'd try to integrate it into this presentation. So I saw this online. And I thought this was a really cool uh, way to to capture some of the some of the um, imp important notes of the Samer model. So in the substitution phase, it's kind of like just a cup of coffee. So that's uh, when you're substituting something uh, with the use of technology, there's no necessarily there's functional change. It's just it's all the same. So it's just like your cup of coffee. And then when you when you go into the augmentation phase, um, there's a functional improvement. So it's kind of like a latte. You know, you add a little bit of milk in there. Um, and then when you go into the next stage, there's modification. Then there's like a there's a there's a redesign of that. Of that particular task, uh, so the the analogy is kind of like a caramel macchiato, you know. So there's a there's a bunch of stuff like kind of added to it, and then the redefinition, the final stage, um, it, it it's giving you the ability to do something that wasn't possible before that technology existed. So um, kind of like the pumpkin spice latte that Starbucks is famous for. So I thought this was a, a kind of a neat representation or analogy of the SAMR model. So we're going to start with the substitution. So it, I found an app called um, Quiver, and it used to be called um, AR Coloring. And so what this does is it brings coloring sheets to life. And uh, they have a bunch of free options, and they also have some paid options. But what I wanted to do is quickly just show this video.
All right, so uh, that was a quick video of, of, uh, of the app Quiver. And like I said, they used to be called um, Color Mix. I thought it was AR coloring, but it's actually Color Mix. And um, so what I use it for in my classroom, they have, again, they have. if you go to the website, you can print out these uh, coloring sheets. And they have a lot of pre-made coloring sheets. So the one I thought was really cool is, um, is uh, the dot day coloring sheet. So what that does, and I'll show you, let me exit out of the presentation. Okay, so what that one does is it will, hold on a second, let me get this going. All right, so this is a, the Quiver app. And what it does is, um, like I said, it will, um, it, has a, it has a dot in the middle of a coloring sheet, and, and it will make that come out into three-dimensional shape. So my students, what they do is I ask them to be as creative as possible and show me some of the things that they enjoy about physical education or you know, just being physically active or you know, they could be as creative as possible. So I ask them to color that dot. And as you can see, it kind of pops out into 3D. And they love seeing it. They love seeing their creation in three dimensions. And then uh, what I do with these with these posters or with these uh, with these pages is I'll put them up on a bulletin board. And um, I tell them, you know, have your, have your parents come and uh, scan your work. And so it's amazing to see the parents also scanning it and having the kids, you know, show them how, the, how to use the technology. And so it's a lot of fun. This is a, this is, I think this was a third grade class. This is one of my third graders that did this one. And here's another example. So you see, it just takes any image that's in in that circle, and then you can change it to uh, to bounce and do different animations and things. It's kind of interesting. So Quiver also has an educational section, and that that will go into you know further down or further up the uh, the Samer model where there's, you know, volcanoes that you can interact with and things like that. So um, this first coloring page one, I, I consider it a substitution because there's really no functional change. There's really no additional learning going on. Um, but it's, it's, it's just, it's really cool, <laughs> you know? It's really neat to look at. And so, and the kids really love it. And the kids really, you know, again, they, they, they engage with it and they like using the technology and then showing off their work and, and like I said this three-dimensional uh, living type of uh, um, three-dimensional world so it's a lot of fun so let's move on to the next one so augmentation um, there's an app called AR flashcards and all of these all of these links are hyperlinks so that'll take you to the um, to uh, either the website or to be able to download them on iTunes, and um, we'll share out this presentation. Um, I believe it will be available on the SP Chat um, website. So this one is AR flashcards, and let me cue this one up. Okay, so what this one will do is um, you can print out animals, you can print out dinosaurs, you can print out um, alphabet flashcards, and all from the website, and it's all free. So if I click on Get Started, it'll take me to the viewfinder. And as you can see, once I print out the, the card, I can cut them out and laminate them. And then your kids can scan them and see an animal that's associated with that letter. Now, for some reason, the uh, the the animal, the letter sound in the animal is not coming out. I think it's because of the way I hooked this up, maybe. Um, but if you click on them, you should be able to hear the letter sound and also the animal sound. So again, adding a little bit of a layer to to um, alphabet flashcards. 
So you see a cute little animal, and then you'll be able to hear the letter sound as well. Okay. So again, the AR, the AR flashcard app. Um, let me go back to my presentation. So as I said, if you click on that, if you click on that link, it will take you to the website, and it's not pulling up. Okay, well, that particular link, I apologize for that. That particular link will take you to iTunes, but um, they have a website where you can print out the different, uh, the different. Um, flashcards and dinosaur cards and that kind of thing. So that's the AR flashcard app. Now in in the modification side, um, what I like to do is I kind of explained in the beginning of the presentation. With uh, I, I made some 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 um, some task cards with different exercises on them. And this was kind of a project that I did after going to Gene Blade's um, action-based learning training. And I got really excited about the potential of brain-based exercise. And I love the brain research and everything else that's out there and how it helps learning and mood and everything else. Um, so I made these task cards. And my kids absolutely love them. So what, what I used to make these task cards is um, uh, a, an app called Erasma. So what I did was I videotaped my my son and my daughter doing these different exercises, <clears throat> and I put into iMovie and I edited uh, edited them a little bit, and I put my voice over them. And with each task card, I put instructions, what it does for your brain, a little picture, and then uh, the movie of my kids doing the exercises. So that link, the link here, um, is a link to a Google folder with all the task cards in there. Um, so each of the task cards has an AR target, and when you scan the poster, you can see the video kind of like pop out. Um, and that, that helped me, again, create this blendy, blended classroom environment where I don't have to demonstrate each one of the exercises. They can just watch, they can read it, they can look at the picture, they can hear my voice on the video, and then they know how to do the exercise. So I don't have to explain each and every one of them. And there's, I think, 20 of them. Um, and it's great for self-directed self student experience. So again, I give them the technology, uh, put them in groups, give them the technology, and then let them kind of explore the exercises. So this is the Erasma app. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to scan a couple of these posters to kind of show you how how they work. Now what's great about Erasma is that it, it's real easy to create the targets and the auras, they call them auras, um, and you can share them to, to like the, the general public. What, what people would have to do is, is uh, once you create an account and you create these auras, they have to follow your channel and then they have access to all your auras. Now what's cool about it is that you, they, they work offline. So you, if you have kind of spotty internet access like sometimes I do, and I'm outside most of the time. Um, the kids can still have access to the different auras as long as the the app is downloaded on their on their device. And then um, where you have Wi-Fi or where you have internet, uh, you you would download the app, and then it would kind of download a compressed file of the videos. And then once you're offline, you can still have access to those compressed video files. If that makes sense, um, <laughs> but. What's great about it again is that you can access all the all of the auras, all of the different videos, all of the different things that you associate with a target offline. So uh, the down one of the one of the bad things about Erasma is that you can only have one overlay. So let me show you what that what that looks like. All right, so there's my Rasma app, and so um, when I scan, when I scan this section of the poster with the little figurine um, and the instructions, you can't hear it on here. I'm not sure exactly why, 
but on your iPad, you'd be able to hear my voice uh, giving instructions on how to do this activity. And then you'll see one of my kids actually doing the activity. So Erasma is also a QR, QR uh, code reader. So if you scan the QR code, the URL will pop up and you can take it to the URL as well. So again, these posters have instructions on them. They have a video. Uh, they have a QR code. Um, they have a, the, the brain, what it does for the brain. Um, and then again, they have my kids doing the actual exercises. Let me pull out of there, get back here. And this will all work offline as well. I'm going to see one of my kids doing the exercises. And these are all short videos. They're about, um, I don't know, 20 to 30 seconds long. And so the students would watch the video and then do the exercise. Okay, and I'm pretty sure I put a, yeah, here you go. So this is an example of one of the task cards. And um, again, this is how my students, how I set up my stations. I set up stations, the stu students scan the task cards, they watch the video, and then they do the exercise. And then I always tell the kids, you know, um, there, there's basically one captain for the, for the, uh, for the station, and then I tell that, that captain, uh, to decide who goes next based on, you know, if they're doing, if they're engaged, if they're doing the exercises, and all that kind of stuff. So the captain kind of has, has charge of that particular group. And if there's any kind of problem with technology, then the captain comes and talks to me. Because you know how sometimes technology can, uh, can be a little fickle. So this is also a vine of my students doing the activities. So I wanted you to see wanted to show everybody my students in action. So this was a vine that I tweeted out uh, just recently. We had a rainy day, and so I brought them in. And that's actually my daughter, the one holding the, uh, the tablet there. And so I hang the posters up. They do the exercises, or I'm sorry, they watch the video as a group. Um, then they do the exercise. And as you can see here is, I'll go back to the loop. The whole class, you know, doing the different exercises. One of the stations was a, a Go Noodle station where they got to pick a Go Noodle dance, which was kind of fun. And then the rest of them, they're doing the exercises. So I had 22 kids in, in my classroom, you know, again, all engaged, all doing what they're supposed to be doing, uh, scanning their own cards, scanning their own exercises, and then being responsible to actually do those exercises properly. So really cool stuff. So um, the thing I really like about Erasma as well uh, is that it's really easy to make a, um, an aura as a column. So I have real quick instructions on how to do that here. And I thought it'd be fun to actually make one on this webinar. So I'm going to use my cover sheet for my posters, and I'm going to make an aura. All right. So back to Erasma. I got my Erasma app going. So it's as easy as you click on the bottom where you see that little A or that little symbol for the Erasma. And it'll, this will show you all the different auras that I have on my, on my device. Uh, some of them are kind of like advertisements, but the rest of them, as you can see, are kind of like my posters. I have a scarecrow that I did today um, and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the plus button on the bottom. And then it takes me to all these animations that Erasma already has uh, in their app. So these are all free animations. And if you're familiar with some other um, some other uh, apps and and services, you know these animations could cost a lot of money. So I'm gonna pick. I'm just gonna type in runner, and we'll see what happens. Okay, so they've got a bunch of little animations here. Um, I'm going to pick on this little guy. So he got, he got a little runner here. I'm going to select that animation, and then I'm going to pick my target. So this would be my target. And as you can see on the bottom, it gives you a gauge of how, of how unique that target is. 
or if it's a good target or not. So it's it's in the green, so I'm gonna pick that as being my target. And then it gives you a preview, and then you can move the little guy around based on where you want him to be. Okay, so I'm gonna leave him right there in the middle. And I'm gonna create this, and I'm gonna call it runner. Okay, so it, sometimes it takes a minute to for it to download it and for it to, for you to have access to it, but there it is. So if I pull away, it says you can see right there. It says my runner is available now. So if I pull away and then I go back to my target, you can see my runner, and there he is. And you can go around him, and it was that easy to make a really cool little aura. And you can switch that up if you have some videos. You can put a video on there. Um, you can choose one of their animations. You can buy different animations and then put them on there. But there it is. So now when any uh, one of my students would scan this first page, they would see my little runner. All right. So again, you can you can have various channels on there as well, and then you can add those different animations to a channel. You make it public, and then whoever follows your channel will have access to it as well. So uh, whoever scan whoever's following my channel and scans that cover sheet will have access to that uh, particular aura as well, and they can see the little runner. And if you follow my page, again, if you follow my channel and you scan one of these exercise posters, then you'll have access to all of the videos associated with the posters as well. So um, before I move on, because I think I got here, let me do a little preview here. <laughs> All right, so before I move on, um, this afternoon, um, I was, uh, I got a little Twitter notification. Somebody posted a picture, and it was the coolest thing. It was the coolest thing. And I actually, so I shared these posters with, let me get on Twitter with a friend of mine on Twitter and on Voxer. And she used these posters today. And she sent me a message and a picture of, right, notifications. She sent me a message and a picture of, uh, of how they use them in her class. And it was so amazing. So I wanna show everybody because I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And it put a big smile on my face. Hey, Jorge, yeah, I was just thinking that it's so awesome you've shared that resource. Oh, yeah, yeah, and um, again, so on the presentation, um, if you click on the on the link there, you'll have access to all of those, all of those posters. And, and what a great way to get students to take responsibility for their learning. I just really like it. I see lots, lots and lots of applications for that. Yeah, absolutely, and the kids absolutely love it. So, um, yeah, it's always it's always fun to see them, like you said, taking responsibility for their learning, scanning, and then also not only their learning, but le but their uh, um, they kind of help each other out with behavior as well because they're kind of monitoring how they're doing and that kind of thing. Oh yeah. So Lori Minka, she she again, she's a friend of mine on Boxer and Twitter, and uh, she shared the posters with her adaptive PE group. And uh, like I said, she shared this with me on Twitter, and I was so excited to see this. This was so cool because she had the posters out, she had them scanning, uh, they were doing the exercises, and she even told me that uh, she had a couple blind students and that they were uh, paired up with uh, with some other one, some other students, and they were listening to how I described the exercise, and then they would do the exercise. So that's it's really cool. And again, um, you know. It's just amazing to see how people can take these different exercises and and the different technology and then use it in their class with their adaptive students. I use it in elementary from kindergartners to fifth graders. Um, so it's just it's just really cool, really, really cool to see. So thank you, Lori, if you're listening. All right. Oops. Okay. All 
Okay, so now we're in the redefinition. So in this, in this one, um, there's some really, really amazing examples of how um, Daiquiri has used augmented, re augmented reality to create an amazing experience. So Anatomy 4D is really, really awesome. Um, so they have several different targets. They have a, an anatomy target of the human body. They have a, a heart that I'm going to show you in a minute. And it's really cool because you get the experience um, of, of basically a lab, an anatomy lab, uh, at your desk. You know, you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can, uh, on, the, on the human body one, you can um, choose different layers like the nervous system, the lymphatic system, you can put, uh, you know, the, the muscles on there, the skin on there, you can take it away, that kind of, th that kind of stuff. And then also on the on the heart again, you can choose the different chambers. You can zoom in, you can zoom out. It's actually pumping. You can see how the blood is flowing. Uh, it's just really, really, absolutely amazing. Um, let me see here. All right, so let me show you the the heart. All right, let me. Okay, so this is a heart, and you can see it pumping. And then it gives you options of the different different layers that you can that you can in include or take away to see different aspects of the heart. And again, this this target is is dependent on where the where the sheet is, where this piece of paper is. So as I move it around, I can see the different angles of the heart. I can zoom in. I can see how the heart's pumping. I can see how, how it's all how it's all connected. Okay. And then I can take different layers away and and add them. If I could take the veins away, I can add them. You can see ventricles and you can see inside and how the blood is flowing inside this is absolutely amazing so you could imagine you know i share this with my with my fourth and fifth graders when we're talking about uh, the different systems and the heart and and they just absolutely love it because again this is not this was not you know available to them before this technology existed see the blood flow and take that away so that is anatomy 4d again there's also a human body one that's also equally as amazing okay so daiquiri a little bit about daiquiri daiquiri is um Again, they have a Daiquiri app where you can create your own um, your own targets and your own different layers. And then they also have some some uh, some additional apps like Anatomy 4D, uh, where where they have sheets that you can print out, and then you can see the augmented reality uh, of those sheets, like like the heart, for instance, that we just saw. Um, so if you download the Daiquiri app, you have access to all kinds of different uh, targets that people have made. Um, to make your own, you have to also access the 4D Studio, which uh, was under construction last time I checked. I'm not sure if it still is. Um, but if you haven't, if you don't have an account, then I think it, because it's under construction, it's going to take a little while for them to process some of those accounts. Uh, if you're a teacher, you get a free account with, I think, 25 targets. And that actually goes a pretty long way. Um, but again, I think you have to wait a little, a little bit right now to get an account because of uh, they're, they're, they're updating it and they're doing some really cool stuff. So the 4D Studio is, is it's not, I mean, it's not super complicated, but again, it's not like the easiest software to use. 
uh, like I showed you how to use the Erasma app and how to how to how to easily make an aura with the Erasma app. And that I mean uh, to me that's really simple to use. You just choose a target, you choose a, a animation, and there you go. The 4D Studio you kind of have to play around with a little bit. But what's really cool about it is that you can have multiple layers, you can have multiple overlays, you can have buttons, you can have you have all these different options that you can have on one target, which is really really neat. Um, again, if you're a teacher, you get 25 free targets. Uh, the other thing about Daiquiri is that you have to have Wi-Fi. So uh, if you do use Daiquiri, I would recommend that you check your Wi-Fi, make sure it's working, uh, make sure it's, you have a good connection to your Wi-Fi, and then, and then you know, make sure all that all that stuff is working working well. So before we get to Colin's uh, part and some of his targets, I want to show you. Just recently, I made I made a a cool little target using Comic Life, and I use a Daiquiri app to add some buttons onto my target. And so again, what I did was I showed my students how to use the Daiquiri app, and then and then they went around. And I put them in stations. This is my outdoor pavilion area. And I put them in stations, and they all had a uh, tablet with them. And then they scanned the task card and uh, clicked on the button and then did that activity. So here is a jogging button. It shows them a video about how to jog. We had a balance beam button. We had a slack line. And we had a, ba a cone uh, balancing co course. And so when you click on that button, it takes you to a video on how to do that particular station. So I, I just pulled this from YouTube and uh, it showed some beginning basic uh, walking forward and backwards on a balance beam. So the students watched that and then they did that balance beam activity. And then at the end, the button in the middle, because this was my super, superhero training course, <laughs> the button in the middle was their mission. So I was thinking about, you know, I wanted them to do some sort of assessment, but I didn't want to call it, you know, an assessment. I didn't want to call it a quiz. So I got on Voxer and I talked to some of my friends and on Voxer and I asked them what what would be cool. And so me and Nick and Lick went back and forth and he's like, a mission would be kind of cool. You know, you click on a mission. And so I found this mission button and I hooked it to up to a Google form. And then when they were done, the kids took a Google form assessment, basically just just an assessment on how they felt they did on the different tasks. And then at the end, how they can improve their balance. And that worked out great. So again, that was my task card. And uh, again, I went into the 4D studio and added these different buttons and the, uh, and the videos associated with each. All right. Okay, so there's some really, really cool resources out there. Uh, people who have made um, just awesome, awesome things with uh, augmented reality. Daiquiri in particular. Uh, Colin Brooks is one of them. He has a great blog about augmented reality on the Physetagogy website and just absolutely amazing stuff that he does. So what you see here is a, um, is a physical education board game that he made with Daiquiri. And it's super cool. So I also put a link on here to his tutorial. So if you click on the tutorial, he kind of walks you through how to use the 4D Studio. If you have access to the 4D Studio, I highly recommend watching this video. Um, it, it really breaks it down really well and um, gives you some ideas of how you can use it as well. Uh, and then this link here, the next link, is a link to his uh, board game. So you can download the board game. He made it. He made it accessible to everybody. So that's really cool. So thank you, Colin, for doing that. And um, and let me show you how the board game works. I have a copy here. So this is a board game. You scan it. Get the blue bar and. There's a board game, so you get that brain that pops up in the middle, and that's how you know you've accessed the board game. 
So you can have some game pieces. You roll the die or the dice, and you scan the target. And then what you would do, depending on where you land, you would click on the tar on the uh, on the little square. So I'm gonna let's say I roll the five, and I'm gonna click on the number five here. And then it tells you tells you what to do from there. Okay, and then I'm going to click the back arrow, and I'm going to go back, and the next person would roll, and so on, and you can click the next one. So you would do 20 star jumps to complete that exercise, and so on. So you can click on any of these, and it'll give you an exercise to do. Oh, that was another red one. Oops. Let's try the blue. Blue zone, 10 push-ups. So that is, that is Collins, Collins creation here. And the zones are right here on top as well. He tells you exactly what each of those colors are associated with and how that works. So what's your zone is the, game, the name of his board game. So one more thing that I did, oh, let me go back to the app. So one more thing that I did is I took some of my, some of those activity posters and I put them on Daiquiri. But because you can put multiple buttons, what I did was I, was I just put the different exercises with the videos. And hopefully this one will scan. I haven't scanned this one in a while. Oh, there you go. So I put the different uh, videos of the different exercises on there, and so you can click on one of the exercises and or one of the videos, and then you can see the exercise. So I've done this one as well. Again, you need Wi-Fi. you got to make sure your Wi-Fi is working. So I've done this one as well where I put the posters up uh, around, the, around the room, and the kids just go over and scan them, and then they get a choice to do whichever one they want. So... All right, so lastly, before I get to any questions that we might have, uh, using the Daiquiri app, so I'm, you know, again, part of that Spark superhero team, which is really cool. Uh, what I did with my superhero card, we got these little superhero cards that are pretty cool, is I put a little augmented reality to that. And when you scan it using the Daiquiri app, you have some videos that I've made, you have the VoxCast that I do, uh, a place where you can contact me, and then uh, a link to the Spark website. So if you click on, let's click on one of these videos. So let's say you click on my, my Jump Rope for Heart video. It'll take you to my Vimeo page, and you can watch my Jump Rope for Heart video. Well, it's not pulling up, but you get the idea. <laughs> so again, so that's kind of cool. They, you know, do a little augmented reality with my superhero card. All right, so I hope I hope you kind of got some ideas from this uh, presentation and some of the things that worked for me, and maybe you can incorporate some of these things in your classroom. So Terry, do we have any questions or anything? Um, no, I'm not seeing any questions yet, um, but I know I, I sure like seeing the examples of your your students using them. Do you have some um, other examples you could share with us about your students using this? Um, yeah, I've, I've taken a few vines of my kids uh, using them. Let me see if I can access that. I took some of my kids doing, and I took some pictures of them too, doing the, um, doing the superhero training course. So this is my vine page. Let me see if I can find some. It's us dancing. Hmm. Balancing. There you go. So here, this one, uh, they're scanning the superhero card. Let me see if I could play it for you. Uh oh. Let's sign in.
All right, so these are the different balancing activities that we did. So they're scanning the car, they watch the video. This was one of the activities with was the, uh, the cone course where they had to make a little obstacle course with these dome cones and try to get from one mat to the other. And again, they just scanned the, the, the task card and clicked on the video and then watched it. Mm -hmm. it How really many devices too. do you have? I'm sorry? How many devices do you have? I have six Kindle Fires, and so I use those uh, for the majority of, uh, you know, if I ever use any kind of uh, augmented reality or anything like that, I, I use those. Um, I have an iPad for myself, uh, and then I we're, we might be getting a couple more iPads. So I primarily use those six Kindle Fires. I'm trying to see if I have any more videos. Oh well, these are these are these task the task cards. Oops, oops. <laughs> so I have an early morning exercise group. Uh, this was actually last year, but I don't know if you could see the the that card on that uh, that big jumbo stack. Yeah. That is one of the task cards that I showed earlier. Um, so what we do for our early early more early morning exercise group is. Uh, I'll have half the kids run around the track and do different exercises like that, and then the other half play a big group game. And then we switch. So I'll have the second and third graders running around while the fourth and fifth graders play, and then we switch. So it, it's pretty cool. It's a lot of fun. And I'll typically have 70, 80 kids out there. Wow. And they love it. So that's another easy way to be able to use those task cards, just kind of, and again, because the Erasma app um, allows you to uh, do those things offline, you could take them outside. Out here at the, in this in this park area, we don't have any Wi-Fi, um, but I could still take them out there, and uh, you know they could do those task cards. Yeah, that would be important. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right, here's another one. <clears throat> Have you done anything? So have you got the um, the heart there. Have you got anything with the muscles? Yeah, there's an anatomy app. I have it. Uh, where is it? Now the anatomy app, I would kind of recommend with older kids because it it does show the full anatomy. <laughs> um, <clears throat> let me see. You know what, let me stop this. Let me go to the anatomy app. So there's the anatomy. And you can you can do different layers. Skeletal. And take the muscles away, nerves away. So you can see just the skeleton. Mm -hmm. Kind of explore it. And then you can add the different layers. So check out the lungs. Look at the respiratory system. Look at the muscular system. Wow. Yeah, I think that's just so hard typically is to get them to understand how it relates to their own bodies. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but what a great visual. Mm -hmm. Can you spin it around? Yeah, so it, it, so depending on where, the, um, <clears throat> where the, the target, which is this poster or this uh, page here, um, you can turn it, you can lift it, you can zoom in. So as long as you have that in your viewfinder, it will allow you to move it around. And, and can you see it from different, oh, there you go, from different angles. Right. Yeah, so I can move it this way and 
we can see it to different angles. So that's the anatomy app. So again, th th that's that's a really, really great way to get your kids really to understand how the systems work and how they all work together and how, you know, it, it's amazing how you can, um, you can take a layer away and see different layers to the body and that kind of thing. So absolutely awesome stuff. And that's a free app from Daiquiri. So the app is called 4D Anatomy, or Anatomy 4D, I'm sorry. And um, that's completely free. You go to the website, you print out the, the targets, and then you have access to the heart, the, uh, the human body, and then they have another body one that I do not have. All right, so anything else? We didn't have any questions? No. No? No. But um, those of you out there watching, if you have a question, type it in at Tazzle, and I'll share them with Huawei. <clears throat> well, I, I see this as a, a field that's just going to develop faster and faster. There's going to be more and more apps available and more and more applications. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And like I said before, there's a, there's a huge, you know, there's some big, huge companies that are investing a lot of money into this. So I, I definitely see it as, as sort of a way, the way of the future where virtual reality and augmented reality are really going to change the way we learn and change the way we see things. Because, I mean, again, you can have these these immersive experiences sitting at your desk, you know, and uh, there's some really cool and um, and uh, inexpensive ways that you could do augmented reality and virtual reality, like with Google Google uh, Google Cardboard and things like that. So just really really cool stuff coming along in the future, in the very near future for very low cost. So, wow, super exciting. We've sure come a long ways. Yeah, absolutely. And again, the kids absolutely love it because, like, again, it's a, it's emerging technology and it's still new to pretty much everybody. And when they're getting access to it in the PE classroom and they're seeing the relevance to PE, it's not just, you know, it's not just using technology because um, it's exciting to them. I think it's really exciting to them. And I think it's it's important also to to kind of start shifting their minds. A lot of kids think that technology makes you lazy or technology... Uh, you know, isn't isn't necessarily uh, technology and physical education kind of don't go hand in hand, and I like kind of changing those mindsets because technology could really help um, enhance people's health and enhance their their lifestyles. So this is just one way I think uh, you could use this in your classroom to kind of hit that hit that idea home. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and talk about informational text. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's just uh, another great way for them to get information and yeah, and uh, as you said, to learn. Yeah, absolutely. And again, with these immersive in, in environments and them actually being able to manipulate and uh, you know see the different angles of the skeleton and see the heart and take chambers away and see the blood flowing. I mean, that's it's it's a really unique experience that we that we couldn't we couldn't do before. I mean, you couldn't see a heart and how the blood flew, flowed through the heart before, you know, but with this, this, this kind of technology, now you can. Yeah, huge, huge. Yep. Okay, well, um, for those of you who are watching, um, oh, sorry, Jorge, I don't want to, like, rush you, off, rush you off the screen here. No, no, I mean, if there's no questions or anything else uh, that I, I, you know, we're good. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to remind people to fill out the re, uh, summit reflection on the uh, on the web page. Um, any resources? Um, there's also some um, stuff on. Oh, I don't see it on the Tazel web page. But if we click on the the links on your presentation, that'll take us through to your um, resources that you shared. Yes, and I'll put the link. I'll get that to Matthew, and I'll get the link to the presentation. Uh, hopefully we can get that on the website on the sb.weebly. Great. Yeah, I look forward to, to taking a close look at those. All right. 
Okay, well, Jorge, I'd like to thank you very much for your awesome presentation on augmented reality. And thank you, everybody, for attending. And also one final shout out to the, the Phys Ed Summit team for your guidance and helping us um, get this ESPE Summit happening. So thank you, everybody. All right, thank you. Thank you, Terry, for helping us out. Okay, good night. Good night. <laughs>